Hello audience, my lovely parents, mummies and daddies. I'm Dr. Kavita Kark and I'm the Pediatric Audiology Consultant. Here's something good news for you that uh, we have brought a concept of newborn hearing screening in hospitals. Now this is needed very much because for many reasons that hearing losses are not picked up at birth either by the parents and sometimes in a busy clinic of the pediatricians we don't tend to highlight on those aspects. They are only picked up at 2-3 to three years of age when it becomes too late. This newborn hearing screening is generally the concept of a western world where all the babies born are screened at birth before discharge from the hospital. Now why, why do we do it? Because if we pick up the hearing losses by say 3 to 4 months of age and rehabilitate those babies with hearing aids or cochlear implants, then we can actually get the normal speech and language development, a normal education, a normal child in them. So that's where a lot of research has been done on this and they have proof in and out again and again that early identification and rehabilitation will get you a normal child. Such a good news for the parents, isn't it? Now, because it's a concept of Western world and we have moved a lot of westernized things in our uh, environment, say starting from the dresses to the hairstyle and to the medical services and medical treatment, we treat, we save a lot of newborn babies who are very small, very preterm. So we want to want them to be a normal baby when they move out of the hospital. So we do the vision screening, we do the hearing screening. Some of the blood tests are also done, which if picked up early can again get early treatment and get normal children. So this concept of newborn hearing has got another aspect. Generally the belief for the parents and the professional is that my hearing screening is not needed because you know the babies they will speak at two to three months or two to three years of age and it can be picked up later the treatment can be done later we can clap our hands or we can ring a bell behind the baby's ears to pick up these losses this is all a wrong concept now the the, the way it, it has to be done formally and nicely to pick up the hearing process Parents always feel and professionals also feel that hearing aids cannot be given before 2-3 to three years of age. No, that's wrong. A baby is early picked up by 3 months and giving hearing aids or implants by 6 months can have a normal speech and language development. So, who are the babies who should have the hearing screening done? The answer is all the babies. The normal babies and the babies in the NICU or for any reasons admitted in NICU. The screening should be done before discharge from the hospital. It should be done after 48 hours of birth, but before the discharge from the hospital. Why do we not do it after birth immediately? Because during the delivery, the babies have got a middle ear fluid in the ears, and because of that, they may fail the test. And this gives unnecessary stress to the parents, which we don't want. So we generally prefer to do it after 48 hours, but before the discharge from the hospital. If the babies are failing the screen, that doesn't mean your baby is deaf. Your baby will have a fluid in the ear, most probably fluid in the ear. That's why the baby has failed. So what we do is we assume that because it's fluid, it will clear off on its own in three to four weeks time. You have a repeat screen after three to four weeks and then the baby will pass. So your baby was normal. But there are four to five babies in every thousand babies born who will not pass this follow-up screen after one month and they are the babies who will need further testing and further uh, diagnostic testing and rehabilitation and these are the babies who we are aiming to pick up and these are the babies who will have a detailed te testing done, parent counselling, rehabilitation in terms of hearing aids or cochlear implants and speech and language therapy and then we will have them normal child. There are other issues which we can discuss like when we come to the newborn hearing things, how are the way, what are the ways we do it. There are generally a very simple test which is called auto acoustic emissions. The, uh, we, we, we generally put a little probe into the baby's ears. The baby should be calm, sleeping, well fed. The nappy should be clean so that they are not disturbed. We just introduce a little probe into the ear and we see the some wave patterns on the machines 
if the baby is having a normal cochlea which is a, a organ of hearing inside the ear and uh, the middle ear is not full of, full of fluid or anything then the baby will show a little pattern onto the computer screen which says it is pass. So pass means that the cochlea which is the organ of hearing is working normally. 99% cases this is the cochlea deafness we are trying to pick up. And um, if they pass, they go home. We just explain few things to the mother as if to follow the uh, checklist of sound at home, which is checklist of sound is a parental checklist, which is nothing except that you know we we get a lot of sounds in the environment like uh, banging the doors, something dropping, and the baby startles to loud sounds, or when the baby is feeding, breastfeeding or bottle feeding, they stop sucking, or they start sucking if they're not sucking it when eye rolling, eye widening patterns, eye blinking, these are all explained in the checklist. If your baby is doing all those things at home, then rest assured that things are all okay. And uh, if the baby is not doing, then you must discuss this with your pediatrician so that they can refer you to the appropriate place. Now, the babies who are not passing this photo acoustic emissions test, even at a follow-up, they are having a detailed test done, which is a para test, which is brainstem auditory evoked responses, where we test the whole pathway from the middle ear, inner ear, and the brain, and we see whether the signals are reaching the brain. Sometimes what happens is that the baby is passing the test of hearing, which is opacoustic emission, but later on they are not speaking. Okay. Then again we have to do the test. Now what are the causes of baby who has passed the neonatal screen still not talking? There are many reasons to it. One is, you know a lot of babies these days, a lot of parents and people in the house, they think that you know giving mobile to the baby, they feel very happy Oh, my baby is you know, doing everything on the mobile and enjoying. You know a lot of visual stimulation, they tend to block their audition or the hearing capability. So, a lot of big children in the house who have got all the time watching TV, nobody to talk, both parents working and they having nobody with a language stimulation at home, they tend to develop speech and language delay, not because of the hearing loss but because of the lack of environmental stimulation. This is a very very common thing these days we see in the clinics. This is one thing. Second thing is, a lot of babies don't talk in spite of the normal neonatal screen. The other causes can be, are they autistic, are they hyperactive, or have they got some other developmental delays associated with them, or there is something else going on. Now, there are a few things which the parents must remember. The, the, your pediatrician will tell you, definitely. The pediatricians are very, very good these days. They will tell you. There are a few things where this normal neonatal screen, the babies pass the autoacoustic emissions, but still, when they don't talk, then they should be referred to the appropriate uh, services for, for the evaluation that what is the cause of not talking. 90% of the cases, the hearing is normal, which the parents also know. We do a parental checklist, responses to sounds, assess the speech, assess the comprehension of the child. And we assume that the hearing is normal. So generally, we don't need to do another test. But then sometimes we may have to do further evaluation for a detailed hearing test which probably a chance of missing out at the neonatal period. The percentage is very very small but still what our eyes don't think the brain will, what our eyes don't see the brain will never think and what the brain never doesn't think the eyes will never see. So that's where you do the detailed evaluation. Thank you very much and for any other thing you may discuss with your pediatrician and get the hearing screening done of your baby.